what is scan standard format and extended format let's figure out answer to this question in our today's video hello everyone welcome to link frequency and i'm ashwarya patta this video is part of a course that is introduction to autosav so without any further delay let's get started In CAN, there are two types of message format, namely the standard format and extended format. Let's understand them individually. The first one is CAN standard format. The CAN standard format is also known as CAN 2.0a format. The CAN standard format uses 11-bit identifier and it is used in most of the CAN implementations. The 11-bit identifier allows up to 2 raised to 11 unique message identifiers. The standard format is having higher priority than the extended format. Moving on, the next one is extended format. The CAN extended format is also known as CAN 2.0b format. The CAN extended format uses up to 29 bits and it is particularly used in providing larger address space for the message identifiers. The 29 bit identifier allows up to 2 raised to 29 unique message identifiers. The extended format is having the lower priority than the standard format. The screen represents the detail about the standard format and extended format to comprehend better. Ultimately, the choice between the standard format or extended format depends upon what exactly is the specific requirement. Let's begin by understanding the standard frame format first. Moving on to the screen. The screen represents the structure of CAN standard frame, which contains start of frame, arbitration field, control field, data field, CRC, acknowledgement and end of frame. Let's look into them in detail. The detail structure looks something like this, in which the arbitration field you can see it has two things that is identifier and an RTR and the control field has ID, R0 and DLC followed by the data field CRC, acknowledgement and end of frame. It's time to go through each of them in detail. Starting off with SOF. SOF stands for start of frame. It is a single dominant bit which marks the start of a message. It is used to synchronize nodes on the CAN and the hard synchronization is done in SOF. Moving ahead, let's look into identifier. Identifier is of 11 bits. It is used to decide the priority of a message. Lower the value, higher is the priority. Then moving ahead, it is RTR. RTR stands for Remote Transmission Request Bit, which is of 1 bit. If it's a data frame, then RTR is dominant value, that is logic 0. And if it's a remote frame, then the RTR value is recessive, that is logic 1. If we are transmitting data frame and remote frame, then the data frame will be transmitted first because the RTR value is 0 for data frame, which is of higher priority. Moving ahead, that is IDE. It is an identifier extension, which is of 1 bit. For the standard frame, it is dominant value and for extended frame, it is recessive value. If we are transmitting standard frame and extended frame together, then the standard frame will be transmitted first because the ID value for standard frame is 0, which is of higher priority. The next one is R0. It is a reserved bit for future use. It is of 1 bit, which is a dominant value. Moving ahead, it is DLC. DLC stands for Data Length Code. It is of 4 bits. The total number of bytes in the data field is indicated by this DLC. Next, you can see the data field. It is of 64 bits. It contains the actual data that is to be transmitted inside it. Next is followed by CRC. CRC stands for Cyclic Redundancy Check. It is of 15 bits and used for error detection. It is used to verify if the message is properly sent over the canvas. Immediately after CRC, you can see the CRC delimiter. It is of 1 bit recessive value followed after the CRC. The CRC delimiter bit gives time or space to the ECU to calculate the CRC value. Moving ahead, you can see ACK, which stands for acknowledgement. It is of 1 bit. The transmitting node sends a recessive bit while transmitting. After the successful reception of the node from the receiver end, the receiving node sends the dominant bit indicating a acknowledgement to the message. Immediately after ACK, you can see ACK delimiter. It is a 1 bit recessive value. Once the data is received at the receiver end, it requires some time to send an acknowledgement to the transmitting node. This process requires some time. Hence, ACK delimiter is used. The last one is EOF. EOF stands for end of frame. 
It marks the end of frame and it is of 7-bit recessive value. Moving ahead, let's look into the extended frame format. The extended frame format looks something like this. Even this has start of frame, arbitration field, control field, data field, CRC, acknowledgement and end of frame, which is quite similar to the standard frame format. But there is a slight difference in the arbitration field and control field. The difference is shown in the upcoming image. So here you can see the arbitration field and control field is quite different from that of a standard frame format. Let's look into each of them individually. Starting off with SOF. SOF stands for start of frame. It is a single dominant bit which marks the start of a message. Moving ahead with 11-bit identifier. This 11-bit identifier decides the message priority. So lower the value, higher is the priority. Moving ahead, it is SRR. SRR stands for Substitute Remote Request. It is of 1-bit recessive value. This bit replaces RTR bit of standard CAN message frame. Moving ahead, you can see IDE. IDE is of 1-bit. In standard format, IDE value is dominant and in extended format, the IDE value is always recessive. Moving ahead, 18-bit identifier. So this is an extended bit of 18 bits which is provided in the extended frame format. Going on to RTR. RTR is of 1 bit. In data frame, the RTR value is dominant and in remote frame, the RTR value is recessive. Going ahead with R1. R1 is a reserved bit which is used for future purpose. The value of R1 is always dominant. The next one is R0. R0 is again a reserved bit which is used for future purpose. The value of R0 is always a dominant value. Going ahead with DLC. DLC is a 4-bit value which indicates the total number of bytes in the data field. Next is the data field. Data field is a 64-bit value which contains the actual data that is to be transmitted. The data field is followed immediately by a CRC. A CRC is a 15-bit value which is used for error detection. Immediately after CRC, there is a CRC delimiter which is of 1-bit. This delimiter gives time or space for the CRC calculation. The next one is ACK which stands for Acknowledgement. It is of 1-bit value. The transmitting node sends a recessive bit. After the successful reception of the message at the receiver node, the receiver sends a dominant bit. The acknowledgement is followed by Acknowledgement Delimiter. It is of 1-bit recessive value. Once the data is received at the receiver end, the receiving end sends an acknowledgement to the transmitting node. This requires some sort of time, so hence ACK delimiter is used. The last one is EOF. It marks the end of frame and it is of 7-bit recessive value. So this was all about the extended frame format. Now there might be a question, how to identify whether it is a standard frame format or an extended frame format? Well, there are different ways to identify each of them. First is basically through the identifier. If it is a 11-bit identifier, then it is a standard frame format. If it is a 29-bit identifier, then it is an extended frame format. The next one is through the IDE. If the IDE is dominant, then it is a standard frame format. If the IDE is recessive, then it is an extended frame format. In case both the standard frame and extended frame are transmitting together, then the standard frame format will have the higher priority. So, this video was all about understanding the standard format and extended format of CAN. Thank you so much for watching our video. If there are any queries related to the video content, you can surely comment down in the comment section. Until we meet on our next video, happy learning. Tune yourself to make a difference.